je m'appelle Brendan Gillen, je suis ici pour vous souhaiter la bienvenue à la collation des grades de la faculté de musique Schulich de l'Université McGill. Uh, I'll just be on the podium for a few minutes. I uh, wanted to again uh, express our gratitude to the great job the quintet has been doing in holding off the inclement weather by propitiating the gods. I'm simply going to uh, refresh your memory about the principal points of the program, and then afterwards our very affable dean of students, Chris Buttle, will tell you about the uh, emergency procedures that are in place. So shortly, the platform party will be arriving. They will be led by a piper. And when they actually arrive in the tent, I'll be asking you to stand. And you remain standing until everyone has come in. The platform party is on the platform at which point uh, the university hymn will be sung by Dr. Tracy Smith Bassett. And afterwards, sit down, and there'll be a few short addresses and various ceremonies. And then finally, there'll be the awarding of the degrees. And after the awarding of the degrees, we will all stand for the singing of the national anthem, again by Dr. Tracy Smith Bassett, and we'll leave. So it'll be a very straightforward ceremony. It's all in your program. So I now turn the podium over to uh, Chris Buttle, the Dean of Students. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. So welcome to McGill and to this year's convocation for the Faculty of Music. We're very pleased that you're here today and congratulations to uh, all the graduating students and to families and friends. Uh, my name is Chris Buttle. My role is extremely exciting today. I get to share with you the evacuation procedures. It's very important. I take my job seriously. I want you to not worry because the university has a plan. Okay? So, bienvenue McGill à la cérémonie de création de grade de cette année. Je m'appelle Chris Buttle et on me demandait à vous, à vous informer des procédures d'évacuation d'urgence mises en place. La université a mis un point en plan pour faire face à une improbable situation d'urgence. If an evacuation is required, the registrar will announce this to you. You will then be required to leave the tent immediately, perhaps to another building or perhaps to the field over there, to your right. Si une évacuation de lieu devenait nécessaire, le registrar en ferait annonce. Vous devrez alors quitter les temps sans tarder. Selon les circonstances, vous devrez vous rendre dans un autre bâtiment ou sur le terrain en face de la terre, sur l'autre côte de la rue. If you are told to evacuate, please do the following. Leave all baby strollers behind, but do not forget your children. <laughs> do not, family, do not go with your graduating student because they will be going elsewhere. Follow the instructions of the security officers and ushers, and if the evacuation is to another building, you will follow the colored lines on the roadway evacuation map uh, on the roadway, and there's an evacuation map on the back of your program, and it's up on the screen right now as well. If you need assistance during an evacuation, you speak to an usher or security officer. You still with me? Okay. Good. Laissez tout les poussettes sur place, mais ne suivez pas les diplômés qui vous accompagnent. Suivez les instructions des agents de sécurité et de placière. Si une évacuation effectuée dans autre bâtiment, suivez les tracés colorés sur la rue face à la teinte correspondant à la couleur de votre siège. Vous trouvez dans un plan d'évacuation un verso de programme qui vous a été remis. So, once the emergency is over, announcements will be made in the at the evacuation sites to inform you of what will happen next, and there will be information on the McGill website. If you, if you or your party members need any assistance during convocation, please speak to an usher or a security officer. Une fois la situation urgence passée, des annonces seront faites en emplacement d'évacuation pour vous indiquer la suite. En tout temps, si vous, un membre, vous ou un membre de votre groupe requérez une assistance médicale, indiquez à un agent de sécurité ou à la placière. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. You did very well today. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful time this afternoon. And again, congratulations to all. Merci.
I will now draw your attention to the screen where there'll be a short video, and after that video, uh, keep your ears out for the bagpipe. Thank you. My name is Maria Gracia. I'm originally from Chile and I did a, a honors in Latin American Studies and International Development. My name is Akil Varani and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer based in Montreal. I graduated in 2012. Je m'appelle Guillaume Drouin Garneau, je suis ancien de, de McGill. J'ai gradué en 2012. Once I graduated, I really wanted to find a way to stay connected with the university. I did some research and found the McGill Women's Alumni Association. It really spoke to me because of their mission to promote women's leadership and highlight what female grads have been contributing to the community. My participation au sein du club cycliste de McGill, je pense que on est une super belle gang. Puis encore aujourd'hui, on voit des anciens, des jeunes qui sont étudiants. Puis on fait des sorties ensemble, on partage une passion. I got involved with the mentor-mentee program uh, with the McGill Alumni Association. It was actually, I was trying to find a way uh, to give my time to McGill. I definitely recommend any mentorship program, whether it's having a connection to other people or advice from someone who's been through it. To try and figure out what you want to do is not as clear-cut as people think. It's important to be able to tell people that if you have those fears, those concerns, they're normal. I've spoken at homecoming, events, uh, the McGill Young Alumni Association. I recently created a live artwork at the hashtag Law Needs Feminism Because National Forum. Through McGill Connect, I was introduced to this global network of McGill alumni who I had something in common with. Once I sort of had my industry figured out, my next step was how am I going to get abroad? Ultimately, through connecting with so many different alumni on the McGill Connect platform, I made the decision that London, England would be best for me to kickstart my career. I want to wish the graduating class all the best of luck. This is the beginning of a very exciting new chapter in your life, where hopefully you feel prepared and excited. Bonne chance à tous. Je vous souhaite euh, du succès, du succès dans, dans, dans vos projets futurs. Je pense que vous êtes passé à travers une institution qui vous permet d'avoir accès à tout ce que vous voulez. Donc, euh, have fun, enjoy the ride, and, and, and be patient. Donc, puisque j'ai euh, fait la résumé de la, du programme en, en anglais, je vais faire en français, juste pour le dire. Donc, bientôt, le cortège d'honneur va arriver. Euh, lors de son arrivée, euh, je vais vous demander de vous lever. Et ensuite, euh, quand le cortège est bien installé sur la plateforme, euh, le docteur Tracy Smith Bessette va chanter l'hymne de l'université. Ensuite, euh, le chancelier et la principale vont prendre la parole pendant quelques minutes et on va suivre ça avec la remise des diplômes et finalement, après la remise des diplômes, euh, le docteur, la docteure euh, Tracy smith Bessette va encore, encore une fois chanter, cette fois l'hymne national. Et à ce point-là, on va partir, on va quitter, c'est euh, le cortège d'honneur qui va quitter en premier et ensuite les étudiants. So just to remind you, after the end of the program, first the platform party will be leaving and then the students who receive their diplomas will follow the platform party the row closest to the platform first, the row farthest away last, and then that ceremony will then be over with. So momentarily, the platform party will be arriving, and at the appropriate moment, I'll let you know about when to stand. You can probably hear the pipers.
Please stand. Let me go to play. Thank you, Dr. Smith Bassett. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, graduating students, families, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour à tous. As Chancellor and on behalf of McGill University, I welcome you today to our beautiful downtown campus to celebrate the class of 2017 and the students graduating from the Schulich School of Music. 
It's wonderful for me to look out at this audience and see such an inspiring group of graduates, supporters, family, and friends. It's an honor to be here and to share this important milestone with you. D'abord, permettez-moi de vous transmettre à tous des félicitations bien senties. I have a keen appreciation of what this day means. Once upon a time when dinosaurs ruled the land, I too was part of a graduating class at McGill, and it was a very proud moment in my life. And some considerable time later, I returned on two occasions as the parent of McGill graduates, and like all parents here today, I beamed with pride, twice. Now as chancellor, I have the privilege of attending convocation ceremonies each year. So you could say I've seen graduation from every angle. Que j'y assiste à titre de diplômé, de parent ou de chancelier, cette cérémonie demeure pour moi une célébration du travail assidu, de la détermination, des sacrifices et d'une réussite grandement méritée. Alors bravo et chapeau bas à chacun d'entre vous. Now, although I'm not a psychic, I think I can predict some of the things that will happen to you in the immediate future. There will certainly be much celebration, whining and dining, and lots of photos, which will then be shared on social media. And there'll be lots of advice, lots and lots of advice from many sources, parents, relatives, friends, professors, you name it. So before you hear from all these people, I'd like to get my two cents in and offer my own advice to you. Today, for better or worse, we live in a very connected world. Thanks to social media, we can all express our opinion, voice our support, declare our outrage, and do it all in real time, anytime. By the time I finish this sentence, 60,000 tweets will have been posted on Twitter, hopefully not all about this speech. The fact is, we live in an immediate world. We find out about news immediately. We react to news immediately. We post our opinion immediately. Instant Twitter outrage and public shaming is now just part of reality. So my modest advice to you is this. I'd like you to consider the value of stepping back from the very human urge to rush to judgment, to resist the temptation to jump to conclusions or to jump on a bandwagon. I came to this perspective through my own experience. I had the privilege of serving in the Senate of Canada for more than 21 years. Je sais que cette vénérable institution ne fait pas l'unanimité. Mais pour ma part, et comme pour la plupart de mes collègues, j'ai assumé cette responsabilité avec beaucoup de sérieux. À mes yeux, j'avais pour rôle d'émettre une opinion modérée et réfléchie. Autrement dit, de prendre en considération le cadre législatif, le contexte et les conséquences, puis de faire une évaluation éclairée et des recommandations judicieuses. Now, as students at McGill, you have all acquired the same skills during your time here. When working on a paper or a project or a problem, you gather information, assess sources, look at differing points of view, and draw conclusions based on your best judgment. This is a wonderful and elegant tool to take into the world. I urge you not to lose it and to use the principles and methods which you've learned here and apply them to your everyday experiences and to the society around you. Above all, I encourage you to insist on nothing less than imperial facts and data as the basis for your opinions. In some cases, this will confirm your views. In some cases, it may cause you to change your opinion or even prompt you to engage in constructive dialogue. This is not a sign of intelligence. It's not just a sign of intelligence. In our society, it's a sign of integrity and courage. The world needs more of it. It needs more, much more, thoughtful discourse, more room for diverse voices, more tolerance and understanding, more kind words, and less rancor. Now let me close with a quote which summarizes my thoughts today. It comes from one of your fellow McGill graduates, 
and someone who touched the lives of many around the world. I talk, of course, of Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen left a wonderful legacy of songs and poems and prose. I think this quote is particularly appropriate here today. He said, to keep your hearts open is probably the most urgent responsibility you have as you get older. I can certainly attest to that. Do keep your hearts open. Be generous of spirit, quick to comfort those in need, and measured and considerate in your words and deeds. And remember to keep your hearts open to your friends and supporters here at McGill as well. Wherever you go in the world, this will always be your home, and we will always cheer your successes and accomplishments. So stay in touch, not just today, but th throughout your journey through life as a McGill graduate. Good luck, and may this day be both a joyous ending and an auspicious beginning to all of you. Thank you. Merci. Je voudrais maintenant inviter la professeure Suzanne Fortier, principale et vice-chancelière de l'Université McGill, à s'adresser à l'auditoire. Professeur Fortier. Bienvenue aux finissants de 2017. Welcome to the graduating class of 2017. I'm joined here today by your families and friends, by our Chancellor, our Chancellor Emerita, the Chair of the Board, our Governors and Governors Emeriti, by our Distinguished Honorary Degree recipient, awards recipients, by special guests and esteemed colleagues. We are here together to say how proud we are of you and of everything that has brought you here today. C'est pour nous un immense bonheur de vous féliciter pour vos réalisations et votre persévérance. You have worked hard. We have you have worked hard on your journey to being here today. And today marks an important milestone. Savor it, enjoy it, celebrate and remember this moment. Remember as well the friends you made during your time at McGill, and keep them close. Convocation is a celebration, and many are here to celebrate with you. Of course, your family and your friends, professors, librarians, and staff. You know that they've all been cheering for you from your very first day. And so I would like to invite you, the graduates, to stand up, please the graduating students, so that you can cheer for all of those who've been supporting you. Please stand up and give those people a big round of applause. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. And you know that they'll never stop cheering for you and rooting for you. They will be there for you whatever you choose to do next. We know that you have a mind that knows how to learn, and you will use it to do great things. Over the years, in fact, as I've gotten to see all that you were doing, I've called you various names. Yeah, I've called you the startup generation. I've called you the walk the talk generation. I've called you the broadband generation. And that is because unlike any generations before you, you are really ready for action. You're ready to make an impact on the world. Your thoughts and your ideas are spreading at an incredible speed across the planet. You have influence and perhaps far more power than you realize. You're part of a new revolution which is transforming the way we live, the way we work, and the way we relate to one another. Take hold of the changes that are happening 
and make it your goal to see them benefit everyone across the world. Build a future for our country and our world that are inclusive places. Now, this could sound daunting, but of course, it's not on your shoulders alone. We know that you will turn to others, seeking purpose, sharing and questioning ideas, and discovering new opportunities. You already know what it means to work as a team. And of course, we see inspiring examples of teamwork every day as we watch students in action at our university. And I want to share one in particular with you. It happened last February. I was at a women's hockey game between the McGill Martlets and the Carlton Ravens. Now, our Martlets, they're the best, I think, but anyway, they were leading six to four, and there was 35 seconds left in the game. So, of course, the Ravens pulled their goalie out of the net, and the Martlets captain found herself with the puck in front of an empty net, and she did not score. No, she did not score. What she did instead is pass the puck to her teammate, who already had two goals in the game, and thereby giving her a hat trick and the first star in the game. And all we could say, all of us who were there, was, wow, what a great example of true team spirit, putting the team first. Now, while we're on the topic of team spirit, I want to recognize the outstanding contributions of Stuart Kip Cobet the chair of McGill's Board of Governors, who will be completing his term at the end of June. Kim has been an exceptional member of Team McGill, serving our university in so many ways, from president of the McGill Alumni Association to valued members of numerous governance committees. He truly is what we call an MVP, loyal, present, generous with his time and good advice, and always ready to do his part. Thank you, Kip, for your loyalty, friendship, and exemplary service to the university. Thank you also to Kathleen Massey, who will be leaving McGill after nearly 10 years as the university's registrar and executive director in enrollment services. We're grateful, Kathleen, for your unwavering commitment to McGill students and to the university community. You're a model for all of us as an effective and caring leader, always willing to challenge the status quo for the betterment of McGill. And finally, thank you as well to Professor Julie Cumming for her leadership and service as interim dean during the past year. She's done a fantastic job, and we'd like to recognize that. Et un grand merci à vous tous, les diplômés de 2017. You have made great contributions to our university during your time here. Nous savons que vous allez continuer à faire rayonner notre université à travers le monde. Vous faites partie d'une grande et belle famille. J'espère que vous considérez toujours l'université comme votre maison. Revenez-y le plus souvent possible. Les portes vous seront toujours très grandes ouvertes. And I I, we look forward, all of us, to hearing about your lives, your success, and about all the places that your education will take you. Felicitations, congratulations. Thank you, Professor Fortier. We'll now proceed with the presentation of the Schulich School of Music Outstanding Teaching Awards. I invite Professor Richard King from the Department of Music Research to present the first teaching award winner, 
followed by Professor Lloyd Whitesell, also from the Department of Music Research, and to conclude, Professor Julie Cumming, Interim Dean, will present the last two winners. Professor King, please introduce the first teaching award recipient. Madam Vice Chancellor, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Denis Martin, one of our doctoral candidates in sound recording. Denis is from Halifax, Nova Scotia, where I spent my youth, uh, which makes us, I suppose, fellow Haligonians. Uh, Denis was the top candidate applying to our master's program back in 2011, and after finishing his degree, he became a very busy freelance recording engineer. After several months, however, he told me he had become more interested in teaching and that he wanted to apply to our PhD program. Of course, we were delighted to hear this. Uh, since that time, Denis has proven himself as a dedicated and excellent lecturer, a committed mentor working closely with his students as they prepare to apply to our graduate program. Denis's research interests fall squarely in the area of, ed of education as he works to develop a software application tool that teaches audio students how to hear and understand the effects of dynamic range controllers. His innovative work is already serving to create a more a complete technical ear training pedagogy for our current master's candidates. The group of students responsible for Denis's successful nomination contributed some compelling remarks. Here are a few excerpts. Denis balances a combination of lectures and hands-on work to ensure that his students form connections between topics and real-world applications. He is one of the most personable professors we've had in our collegiate careers and is an invaluable asset to the sound recording area. We are mostly certain Denis is a genius in the field, but this does not prevent him from being able to clearly and simply break down tough concepts into simple building blocks. Congratulations, Denis, on receiving this Schulich School of Music Outstanding Teaching Assistant Graduate Instructor Award. Madam Vice Chancellor, I'm pleased to introduce the winner of the Graduate Instructor Award for Arts Courses. This type of teaching involves outreach to non-music students in a large lecture setting. It's meant to inspire people to find out more about classical music, to get them to think about how they listen, and to open up new avenues of musical enjoyment and understanding. Jessica Holmes is a dynamic and creative teacher who makes the classroom a performative and rewarding experience. Here are some of the things the students in her class had to say. Professor Holmes has a natural ability for teaching. She is a masterful lecturer and a fantastic person. She makes the material come alive with authentic passion for the subject and is infectiously enthusiastic about all music. She is friendly, approachable, and cares deeply for her students. She went more than the extra mile. Despite the large class size, she made me feel comfortable participating and offered encouragement in a way that made the class accessible to all. She ignited a new passion for music in me. Professor Holmes didn't simply teach us the basics of critical listening, she gifted us with it. She was able to reach out to 300 of us and spark an interest in every single student. She does the world of music a favor by imparting her knowledge to us. In recognition of her passion, skill, and dedication in the classroom, we're proud to give Jessica Holmes this teaching award. Madam Vice Chancellor, I'd like to present Professor Michael McMahon, winner of the Schulich School of Music Outstanding Teaching Award for full-time faculty. Michael McMahon is one of Canada's greatest collaborative pianists. In 2012, he won the Ruby Award from Opera Canada for his outstanding collaborative work with the country's top singers. 
Collaborative pianists must do much more than just play the piano. They must know song, opera, and opera oratorio repertoire, languages, diction, and poetry. They must be able to sing while playing, breathe with the singer, follow a conductor, uh, play from orchestral scores, and learn lots of music very fast. Michael McMahon teaches all those things to his students. Plus, he also coaches many of our singers in both song and opera repertoire. McMahon is especially famous for his song interpretation class, in which student singers and pianists are paired up and work together for the academic year. Students are required to perform in class every other week and to provide commentary on the performances of the other students. McMahon's nominators describe the transformative effect of this class in glowing terms. He begins by figuring out who each person is as a human being. One student described his genuine care, generosity, and personalized approach. A recurring thread was the way he develops an appropriate voc vocabulary for each student and provides equal attention to singers and pianists. Another student described how he creates a classroom where it is not possible to be a passive observer. There is always student input, so students develop their critical listening skills. Students also learn from him how to word their comments and critiques so that they will be respectful to the performers. A student put it best, Professor McMahon single-handedly helps transform the singers and pianists of the Schulich School of Music into artists. Thank you. Madame Vice-Chancelier, I now present Christoph Neidhofer for the Schulich School of Music Outstanding Teaching Award for full-time faculty. Professor Neidhofer teaches music theory. He's also a composer and a pianist. He can play anything, and as one student said, he has limitless musical examples permanently at the tips of his fingers. Um, as a composer, he also has incredible insight into his specialty, 20th century music. He teaches a full range of courses in the Schulich School of Music, from large undergraduate courses with TAs to composition tutorials and graduate supervision for music theorists and performers. His nominators provided a long list of his virtues. A common thread was the way he listens and responds to his students in constructive ways. One student described his incredible aptitude for taking statements even those that are largely incorrect or misinformed, and using them productively. <laughs> Another student commented that his approach makes students feel appreciated and valued and encourages them to continue to participate and engage more deeply with the material. When there are disagreements in the class, he seeks to integrate viewpoints, however disparate, and to show how they might work together to benefit the analysis or the discussion. Another recurring theme was his irresistible excitement about research and the ways he draws students into the discovery process. He is also flexible and creative in the classroom. One student described how he takes delightful and fascinating tangents and finds clever ways to link them back to the topic. This extemporaneous and inimitable creativity is what makes his classes simultaneously gratifying and enriching. Graduate students and TAs find him the ideal mentor and role model. They mention his humility, his professionalism, his availability, his brilliance as a teacher, and his ability to support and encourage students to develop their own ideas. Christoph Neidhofer, inspires his students to be their best selves as musicians, as researchers, and as people. Thank you, Christoph.
Congratulations to each of the winners on their great achievement. And now, Professor Cumming, please return to the podium to present Professor Beverly Diamond that she may have conferred upon her the highest recognition that is within the power of this university to grant. Professor Cumming. Madam Vice Chancellor, I present Professor Beverly Diamond, a renowned feminist ethnomusicologist. She is Professor Emerita at Memorial University of Newfoundland, where she held the Canada Research Chair in Ethnomusicology from 2002 to 2015. She also taught at McGill many years ago, at Queen's and at York Universities. Diamond was the president of the Society for Ethnomusicology. And in, at Memorial, she established the Research Center for the Study of Media, Music, and Place, where she created the Back on Track CD series of archival recordings with exhaustive documentation in collaboration with communities in Newfoundland and Labrador and other parts of Canada. She has played a major role in developing ethnomusicology as a significant discipline in Canada, establishing programs in the field at Queen's, York, and Memorial. Diamond's publications have explored cultural identity, feminist musicology, Canadian music historiography, indigenous modernity, and the construction of social meaning via audio technologies. She is the author of Native American Music in Eastern North America and co-editor of Music and Gender and Aboriginal Music in Contemporary Canada, Echoes and Exchanges. She has received multiple awards, including Member of the Order of Canada, Trudeau Fellow, and the Shirk Gold Medal, the highest honor from the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. Diamond's research focuses on indigenous musical culture in Canada and Scandinavia. She looks at Canadian Inuit and First Nations song traditions and sound producing instruments, and at Sami Yoik, a traditional form of song from Lapland. Her field work in communities in, commu in Canada and abroad provides important insights into issues of cultural diversity and indigenous modernity. Her work employs new styles of interaction and collaboration that allow her to investigate biases and values that frame varied accounts of Canada's cultural history. She has worked to bring Aboriginal and other communities into contact with academic audiences around subjects of common interest, such as cultural property, gender, and technology. She has taken to heart the mandate of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission on residential schools in Canada, looking at expressive culture and soundscapes of colonial institutions, and at music as a mode of trauma recovery. This honorary doctorate comes at a propitious time. It is essential to recognize the importance of indigenous peoples as we look back at the 150th anniversary of the Confederation and at the 375th anniversary of the European founding of Montreal. McGill and Montreal are situated on unceded territory, which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange among indigenous peoples, including the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe nations. We must honor and respect the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this territory on which we gather today. McGill is also working to support indigenous studies and education. The Provost Task Force seeks to heed the Truth and Reconciliation Commission by engaging and collaborating with indigenous communities. Professor Diamond's work provides a wonderful model for us. At the same time, the Schulich School of Music anticipates hiring an ethnomusicologist specializing in Canadian indigenous music this coming year, coinciding with Professor Diamond's tenure as a distinguished visiting chair in winter 2018. We are very happy to honor her here today. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to invite our most recent graduate, Dr. Beverly Diamond, to deliver the convocation address. Dr. Dr. Diamond. Chancellor Meehan, Principal and Vice Chancellor Fortier, Mr. Cobbett, Chair of the Board of Governors, Interim Dean Cumming, proud parents and guests, and most of all, members of the graduating class of 2017. I am very honored to accept this honorary doctorate from McGill University and spe especially delighted to share this day with those of you who are graduating. It is also a, a huge responsibility to accept this honor on the land of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabeg First Nations. As was already mentioned, McGill was actually the first university at which I taught, I won't tell you how long ago, and so this place has a special resonance for me as well as you. Of course, McGill has changed a lot in those decades, as has the study of sound and music. You're graduating at a particularly dynamic moment that some are describing as a sonic turn in scholarship, especially the social sciences, but in other domains of life as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit about change for the next few minutes. Incremental change in how we study music may become more radical change. If you return in 20 years, I wonder how similar or different the curriculum will be at the Schulich School of Music. Will McGill and other Canadian universities follow the recommendations of a recent college music task force that advocates a turn away from teaching students to play repertoire and a fundamental shift to emphasize creativity, diversity, and integration as the most relevant and indeed essential bases for music study in the 21st century? Sound studies, and McGill is very lucky to have leading scholars in this field, already has taken us in the direction of integration. Of course, that report did miss one thing. Most of us love specific repertoire, whether it's a new composition or that pop song we first fell in love over. Pieces of music, then, will undoubtedly continue to enrich personal and collective memory, and this is something quite fundamental for our sanity and our future. Another call for change in university music schools came from a recent BBC Music magazine. They predicted that in 20 years, all the current subjects in music schools would be replaced by courses organized around research creation, digital technology, and ethnomusicology. Of course, Kermit at McGill has been at the forefront of digital technology for many years, and I was delighted to see my field of ethnomusicology on that list. Who knows? We'll come back in 20 years and have a conversation. If you come back in 20 years, I wonder what sort of work you will be doing in a world where working with sound is also changing immensely. You've all been immersed in music at McGill, and some of you will undoubtedly continue in music-centered careers. Um, but it's useful to note that the study of sound and music is relevant and increasingly seen to be relevant to many fields health, architecture, business, indigenous law, to name just a few. Consider some examples of how our influence is spreading. As we learn more and more about the ways music contributes to wellness, the biomedical fields have begun to take note. In St. John's, Newfoundland, where I live, for instance, the research center I directed until recently was approached by a family doctor doing research on Alzheimer's. He realized how music was a medium that triggered and improved memory, and he sought help in identifying place-specific repertoire from, from different decades. We also have a choir in St. John's run jointly by faculty from medicine and music for people with respiratory problems. At Queen's University, there are investigations into music as a vehicle for transforming the brainwaves of PTSD victims. And there are hundreds of arts initiatives for indigenous survivors of Indian residential schools. While some reflect a rather naive belief in the therapeutic ethic, the far too simple idea that music must surely be a cure for the woes of society, some are reporting irrefutable positive results. At the same time, music is used for some of the most violent purposes ever in human history. The American military, and undoubtedly others, deploy no-touch torture, sound played at deafening volume, so loud as to damage vital internal organs. Or they play to prisoners music that the prisoners revile over and over to inflict psychological torture. 
So it's a mixed picture. Of course, music aligns differently for different folks. For many indigenous communities, song is law. Among city planners, on the other hand, song is money. The arts are increasingly regarded as drivers of urban economies. Music's purposes then remain varied and contested. And whatever sort of work you might be doing in the next 20 years and beyond, the special skills you acquired in Music and McGill should make you attentive not just to aesthetic nuance, as important as that is, but to these localized and deeply invested members of the social fabric who turn music in such different directions. Finally, in the context of a remarkably multiple and changing world, I wonder how you will continue your education in sound and music after you leave with your degree today. Uh, I've learned some of the most important things about sound and music uh, well beyond my studies, my formal studies in music, and I think you will too. One thing that I needed to learn, for instance, and that Indian residential school survivors have taught me was how deeply the sounds of oppression sit in the psyches and bodies of those who have been traumatized. The sound of muffled crying is the most frequently referenced sound in the published volume of testimony in the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission released in 2015. Any process of conciliation will need to recognize that sound and music uh, tell us a great deal uh, about encounter and that we need to think about the nature of encounter. As one whose research often involves ethnography, I've had the privilege of learning many valuable sonic skills and understandings from indigenous elders and contemporary musicians who've kindly agreed to work with me. One encouraged me to hear the ringing of the sound of thunder on a clear day. Think about it, thunder on a clear day. It's rare magic. We kind of hope there won't be any of this today, but there might be. Another taught me to listen differently to intercultural music making. He puts opera singers and traditional yoikers into dialogue, sometimes with rock or jazz accompaniment. Of course, you might say, unexpected combinations are arguably the expected in the 21st century, the norms of, of world music. But what if we resist listening normatively, resist the sonic gray out, to think about what sharp sonic juxtapositions mean in terms of the uneven histories of musicians and people more generally? The theorist of modernity, Bruno Latour, argues compellingly that, that modern, modernism was defined by our very propensity to uh, put things into specific categories, nature and culture, different academic disciplines, genres of music, for instance. And we know that they were developed mostly by elites to make hierarchies of knowledges that cast some people as less important or even less human. We have to decide whether in our modernity we hear those, those stylistic clashes as the wrong way to sing or as a marvelous multiplicity. Furthermore, are such juxtapositions pastiche or political messaging? And who benefits when we decide to listen one way or another? I've reflected briefly on changing sonic worlds because you're at a point of change. So as you begin the next phase of your life, I hope that your sonic creativity continues to grow, your capacity to understand the social formations that underpin sound and music continues to deepen, and that you embrace and listen respectfully to the incommensurable and even the unfathomable. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Diamond, for a most inspiring and thought-provoking speech. Nous allons maintenant procéder à l'attribution des grades académiques. The Provost and Vice Principal Academic, Professor Christopher Manfredi, will begin the formal proceedings. Professor Manfredi. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. I am pleased to invite the students graduating from the Schulich School of Music for the conferral of degrees. This is a truly joyous event in the cycle of any university's life, but particularly so at McGill where we have such talented and accomplished students. 
Each student crossing the stage this afternoon will be greeted by the Chancellor, the Principal, or the Chair of the Board of Governors. Students receiving their first degree shall remove their mortar board or hat. At center stage, they will be symbolically capped, signaling ceremonially the conferral of the degree. Students who have already earned a university degree keep their mortar board on and will be congratulated by a tap on the shoulder. The parchment or degree itself is given to students by the dean or delegate after they leave the stage and have a photo taken. You may see some students wearing red or white scarves. All self-identifying Indigenous students, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis are entitled to wear graduation scarves at convocation, in the community, and at any and all future McGill events that they attend. The red scarf is for those receiving a degree and white for those getting a diploma or certificate. The feather has two meanings, respect for the person and the mark of an amazing or special event. The Confederacy belt signifies attachment to and respect for the land on which we live, and the turtle symbolizes the inclusiveness of all nations and respect for diversity. En vertu des pouvoirs qui me sont conférés par le Sénat de McGill, je déclare que les candidats dans le nom figure sur les listes officielles des diplômés de l'université, qu'ils soient présents ou absents, ont satisfait aux exigences de leur grade diplôme ou certificat respectif. By virtue of the powers conferred upon me by McGill's Senate, I declare that the candidates whose names appear on the university's official list of graduates, whether they be present or absent, have satisfied the requirements for their respective degrees, diplomas, or certificates. By tradition at McGill, we begin with students receiving graduate degrees, followed by students obtaining undergraduate degrees. I now invite Professor Julie Cumming, Interim Dean of the Schulich School of Music, to introduce the graduates, and Professor Jacqueline LeClaire, Associate Dean of Students and Academic Affairs, to congratulate all graduating students. Congratulations, Class of 2017. Félicitations. For the degree of Doctor of Music in Performance Studies, Adrian Gentry Foster. I keep this one. Mark Christopher McDonald. Millizond McNabney. <laughs> Jonathan Vrome. <laughs> Rafael Leonardo Zaldivar La Rosa. <laughs> For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Music, Audrey Christelle Barbeau. <laughs> Stephanie Lorraine Coury. <laughs> Laura Jenny Risk. David Edward Romblom. <laughs> Jacob Stephen Sigrans. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in Music Education, Kelly Craig. For the degree of Master of Arts in Music Technology, Nicolas Alois Esterer. <laughs> 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 
for the degree of Master of Arts in Music Theory, Julia Yebek. For the degree of Master of Arts in Musicology, Stephen DeFourwire. <laughs> Tessa Claire McLean. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Music in Composition, Christina Marie Volpini. For the degree of Master of Music in Performance Conducting, Benjamin Kepes. <laughs> Simon Rivard. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Music in Performance Early Music, Patrick McGill. For the degree of Master of Music in Performance Jazz, Guillaume Pilote. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Music in Performance Opera and Voice, Paula Berry. <laughs> Jack James Koteling. Torrance Joseph Grix. <laughs> Haitham Haidar. <laughs> Simone Chantal McIntosh. <laughs> Igor Mostovoy. Paul Godfrey Winkelmans. <laughs> Kieran Sean Wooten. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Music in Performance, Orchestral Instruments and Guitar, Peter Anthony Clark. Robert Cosgrove. Carly Jessica Gordon. Catherine Gray. Alexander Carl Haupt. Me, Lani Hirschfeld. Todd Matthew Holland. Bobai Jang. Michael Laser Johnson. Joshua Luke Morris. Anna Pearson. Teresa Marie Rice. Nicholas John Walsh. For the degree of Master of Music in Performance, Organ and Church Music, Jason Claire Beal. <laughs> For
for the degree of Master of Music in Performance, piano, Megan Corey Milatz. For the degree of Master of Music in Performance, solo, Diego Alfredo Montenegro Perilla. For the degree of Master of Music in Sound Recording, Will Owen Bennett. <laughs> Keegan Robert Bulino. <laughs> Jonathan Caspi. Michelle Nicole Lacour. <laughs> Ryan Alexander McNabb. <laughs> Austin William Stavovchik. Sarah Nyat Peng Wong. For the Graduate Artist Diploma, Nathan Adam Mondry. For the Graduate Diploma in Performance, Megan Miscelli. Christopher Lee Paul. For the artist diploma, Joel Christopher Peters, Outstanding Achievement in Organ. Felix Yao An Hong. Jack Olszewski, outstanding, outstanding achievement in piano. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Music in Composition, Ashley Charlotte Bennett. Maxime Filion. Outstanding Achievement in Music Theory and Dean's Honor List. For the degree of Bachelor of Music in Faculty Program in Music, Cole William Barbour. <laughs> Philippe René Carvajal Pirlet. Manon Champel, with distinction. <laughs> Lorelei Dietz. <laughs> Veronica Galicia Lopez. <laughs> Scott Hurwitz. Carmelia Stacy Kayi Lee. Hunter Noble Lyons. Alana Bethany Martin. Claire Genevieve Mathieu. Adam Stewart Muir.
Allison Erin O'Brien. Joseph Matthew Reda. Serena Yuan Chi Smith. Maximilian Brian Spievak, distinction. Jennifer Zato. Lauren Emily Tuccolino, also receiving a Bachelor of Arts. For the degree of Bachelor of Music in Music Education, Alexandra Maria Barrasso, also receiving a Bachelor of Education. Matthew Griffin Brutzese, Outstanding Achievement in Music Education, Dean's Honor List, and also receiving a Bachelor of Education. <laughs> Pasquale Michael Di Biase, also receiving a Bachelor of Education. Heather Worling, also receiving a Bachelor of Education. <laughs> Pei Yao Shu, distinction, and also receiving a Bachelor of Education. <laughs> Nan Shi Zhang, distinction, outstanding achievement in music education, and also receiving a Bachelor of Education. For the degree of Bachelor of Music in Music History, Rebecca Leila Chakor. Claire Elizabeth Cook. For the degree of Bachelor of Music in Music Theory, Vanessa Beatrice McCart. Wei Jia Zhu, distinction. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Music in Performance, Yu An. <laughs> Fernando Raul Anaya Meza, outstanding achievement in trumpet, salt and Gertani gold medal in music performance. Justin Brown Nyara. <laughs> Noah Century, outstanding achievement in clarinet. Aaron Chan. Julie Choi, distinction. <laughs> Ian Andrew Christian, distinction and outstanding achievement in double bass. <laughs> Hannah Craig. Shane Timothy Robert Kulnan, Outstanding Achievement in Flute. Edgar Antoine Donati, Outstanding Achievement in Violin. Jeremy Gates.
McKenna Glorioso, Dean's Honor List. Jeremy Ho, Distinction. Rebecca Nicole Jacobson. Daniel Jang. Ji Wan Kwan. Suk Young Lee, Outstanding Achievement in Guitar. Brandon Lewis, Outstanding Achievement in Double Bass. <laughs> Genevieve, Genevieve Davida Mays. Frédéric Alexandre Michaud. Jordan James Miller. <laughs> Kaine Wakiyama Newton, Outstanding Achievement in Violin. <laughs> Alice May Norris, Distinction and Outstanding Achievement in Viola. Ansela Otkuoglu. <laughs> Justin Derek Purcell. <laughs> Derek James Reichert. Alan Jeffrey Rideout, Distinction and Outstanding Achievement in Saxophone. <laughs> Teresa Shin Wen Wang, Outstanding Achievement in Violin. <laughs> Jeannie Zhang. For the, for the degree of Bachelor of Music in Performance Jazz, Christopher North Colton. Samuel Cousineau. Christopher James Edmondson. Alexandre Francoeur, Outstanding Achievement in Jazz Saxophone and Dean's Honor List. Michael John Go. Colin Richard Lloyd, Distinction. David Osei Afrifa. Sean Rinkenbach. Sarah Rossi, Outstanding Achievement in Jazz Voice and Dean's Honor List. Emilie Samson, Outstanding Achievement in Jazz Voice and Dean's Honor List. Matthew Allen Schultz, Distinction. Jonathan Thorpe.
Daniel Vitkovsky, Dean's Honor List. <laughs> Nathalie Angel Yergatian. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Music in Performance Voice, Emily Brown Gibson, Distinction. <laughs> She got distinction, too. <laughs> um, Nicholas Daniel Burns, Outstanding Achievement in Voice. Christian Carpino, Distinction. William Reed Copeland. <laughs> Catherine Emma Dupressoir, Dean's Honest Honor List. <laughs> Lindsay Tate Gable. Michaela Marie Jensen Large, McGill Alumni Society Prize, and Dean's Honor List. Rose Nagar Tremblay. Kara Search, Outstanding Achievement in Voice. Zainan Chen Ming Suzuki. For the licentiate in music, Marie Nado Tremblay. Christian J.C. Tauchner. Yun Yi Zhang. Thank you, Professor Cumming. Would the graduating class please stand? In my capacity as Chancellor of McGill University, I declare and confirm that each of you is now entitled to the distinction of the degree, diploma, or certificate that has been conferred upon you with all the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities that are pertinent there too. Congratulations, Fidis Tassi. Please be seated. The Secretary General, Ms. Edita Rogowska, will deliver the closing remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Dear graduates and now fellow alumni, this year marks an important anniversary for both Canada and Montreal. In recognition of Canadians whose contributions have made an impact, I'd like to close today's ceremony with a few words from an accomplished Canadian musician a classical guitarist, songwriter, and performer, 
Leona Boyd, whose words I hope you will find inspiring. About Canada, she says the following, our people are a symphony, a multicultural voice from far and wide. Let's harmonize our many different themes and build a nation of our dreams. As you leave McGill to continue pursuing your dreams, I hope you will use the skills you've gained and the friendships you've made to work together in harmony and unity as you contribute to building an even more beautiful, healthier, and melodious community, country, and world. En vous, en vous souhaitant le meilleur des succès, je vous dis bonne chance et bonne continuation. Félicitations. Merci, Madame Rogowska. To conclude the ceremony, please stand as Dr. Tracy Smith-Bassett leads us in the singing of our national anthem. 